Hey guys, this is Pearly. So if you have been following my journey for a while, you know that I'm back in Taiwan. So I only did travel vlogs back then when I was in Paris. So I really miss like sit down like this and chat with you guys. So anyway, today I'm gonna address a very interesting topic, a question that I received quite often and that also interests me very much personally. So the question is, why do I understand English but cannot speak it? Like, why? Why is that? So in this video, I'm gonna first share with you why does this problem happen and later in the second part, I'm gonna share with you my advices on how to solve this problem step by step. So let's get right in! Yalla yalla! So why do we understand it but cannot speak it? In my opinion, there are several reasons on that. Firstly, passive skill and active skill are two very different skill sets. Listening and reading are passive skill, while speaking and writing are active skills. In contrast to passive skill, active skill requires you to do something physically. And especially for speaking, it requires you to have this thought to mouth coordination and there are always going to be sounds that are difficult for you to pronounce so for sure active skill is going to require more effort from you in other words when you listen people do the thinking for you but when you speak you have to do your own thinking. You have to transform your thoughts into a foreign language, build sentences, pronounce it, etc., etc. So that's why it requires more effort and it's gonna be more difficult than passive skill. Secondly, our education system tends to focus too much on passive skill. It just so happened that our English education focused way too much on training our passive skill, such as grammar, reading, memorizing vocabulary, and listening. Too much input, but too little output like speaking and writing. Also, our education tends to teach English in a way that is similar to other academic subjects such as mathematics. It focuses too much on the logic itself, you know, having to have the correct grammar order, how to form a correct sentence, and how to use the word correctly. It focuses so much on having to have the correct answer. It's only gonna hinder us when we started to learn how to speak because now we became so afraid of making mistakes and not to say that we have to take so many English exams at school and it only made it worse because now not only do we lack the active skill, we are also very afraid of making mistakes because we feel embarrassed, we feel bad whenever we receive bad score or incorrect answers. And the third reason, yes, we are too afraid of making mistakes. As we grew up, we tend to become more and more afraid of making mistakes in general, not just in English, because of yeah, how English was taught in school and societal and peer pressure and etc etc. We are just so afraid of what others might think of us or even laugh at us when we made mistakes. So as a result, we tend to overthink and think way too long before saying something in English because we're like, oh my god, what's the correct grammar order for this sentence? What's the correct word or expression to use, etc, etc, because we are simply so afraid of making mistakes. This is also one of the biggest reasons why I think we can pick up a language much faster when we were a kid, because at that time, we were simply not at all afraid of making mistakes. Fourthly, lack of confidence, especially on the pronunciation. So why do we lack confidence when it comes to English speaking? It's simply because we lack the training and the practice we need in order to speak English comfortably. But the logic here is actually quite simple and straightforward. The more you practice, the more comfortable and better you become in 
speaking English. And naturally, the more confident you became. And because you are more confident, you are more willing to speak more English. So it's like a positive feedback loop like a positive cycle. Lastly, lack of practice. This is, yeah, one of the biggest and main reasons of why we understand English but cannot speak it. Because practice itself is just so, so extremely important when it comes to developing your speaking skill. If you don't practice often, then the time you will have to wait for the words to come to your mind when you need them is much longer because your brain just isn't used to that yet. But I assure you, the more you practice, the easier the words will come to your mind when you need them. In other words, the less time you will have to wait for your thoughts to become English words, especially when you start thinking in English too. I believe speaking should be a very intuitive thing. Think about it for a moment when you speak your native tongue, how your brain functions in that kind of situation. You don't place the order of verb and nouns, for example, right? When you speak your native tongue, your thoughts just automatically became words in your mother ton and this is exactly the same when you speak English or any other foreign languages you are trying to learn. Okay, so now let me share with you step by step on how exactly can you practice your English speaking skill. So here's the thing, the ultimate goal of knowing how to speak English is to be able to communicate with others, right? So I categorize what we could do and important mindsets to bear in mind into three different categories. So the first category is what we could do, how can we practice before we talk to others, then the important mindsets and things to do during our talk to others, and lastly, what we could do after our talk to others. So let's get right in. Let's go. Yeah. So it's finally the juicy part. So first of all, let me first share with you what practice you can do before you talk to others in English. Step one, do shadowing practice. Pick a video that you are interested in or you like, you love, that has English subtitles and start doing the shadowing practice. I really could not recommend shadowing practice more, especially when it comes to developing your English speaking skill. It's just such a great practice to get yourself comfortable with your own voice, to train your tongue, to practice your pronunciation, and also to learn how native speaker, the way they speak English, the rhythm and gestures and facial expression, just like everything. Just try to mimic them as much as possible. I really don't have time to demonstrate to you how I do shadow in practice, but I can do another video video fully dedicated to how I do shadow in practice, just let me know if you are interested in it. Okay? Step two, read your favorite things out loud. Pick something that you really like, whether it's an article, a magazine, a poem, a book, etc, etc, and read them out loud often. If there are some pronunciation that you are not so sure of, you can always check it up on Google Translation, for example. This step is slightly harder than the previous one as you don't necessarily have the audio of the document. So instead of just listening to someone and repeat after them, you will have to do more work here. You will have to actively pronounce the words yourself and the phrases yourself and to find the rhythm, etc, etc. But with more practices, the more comfortable and confident you will become with your own pronunciation and also the general way of speaking English. Step three, 
three, <laughs> label things around you out loud to yourself. Ah, uh, so this step is slightly more difficult than the previous two steps because now you have to actively search for words in your brain that associate with the objects. But I promise you, this is a really fun and effective way to expand your vocabulary. So for example, this is my favorite wireless headphone. Um, it's blue, I like to use it often, I wear it all the time, so things like that. You can try to expand your sentences. It doesn't have to be just like a word, like headphone. You can try to make it more personal and start to create sentences that matters to you. The last step, step four, talk to yourself. Yes, talk to yourself. If you have never done it before, you might find it to be quite difficult and quite weird at first, but I promise you this is just so helpful and so effective. And I would really suggest you to try to narrate your thoughts when you talk to yourself. Okay, let me demonstrate to you, for example. Oh my god, the sun is out today. It's so, so sunny, but I have to stay in my office and stare at the computer all the time. And it's so annoying because I want to go out and enjoy the sunshine, but I could not because my boss will be so mad at me if I just go out. Things like that. Like, you know, you get what I mean. We always have so many things going on in our brain and just try to narrate that out loud in English. And the more you practice, the less time you will need to have the words come to your mind when you need them. And another tip I would also recommend you to try out is try to talk to yourself when you are taking a shower. I don't know why it works so good, at least for me. Like I always have much more things to talk to myself and I also speak better when I'm in the shower. I don't know, maybe it's the help of the water, the sounds of the water, or because like I know I'm in a very secured and safe place so I feel more comfortable to talk to myself but I would really recommend you to try that out to talk to yourself when you are taking a shower Okay, with all the practices you did before actually having a conversation with someone in English, now you are finally ready to have an English conversation. Congratulations! Yeah. Yeah, there are some important mindsets and also things to do during the conversation with someone that I would like to share with you. So there are two very important mindsets in my opinion. Firstly, wire yourself mentally every time before you talk to someone in English with this statement. I'm here to make mistakes. Only through mistakes can I learn and improve faster. So try to say something like this three times, at least three times, whether it like silently to yourself or you know out loud to yourself every time before your talk. Like I'm here to make mistakes, I'm here to make mistakes, I'm here to make mistakes. And another very important mindset that I would love to share with you guys is that since conversation with someone is a live interaction. So the flow of the conversation is much more important than let's say the number of mistakes you make. In other words, it's better to make tons of mistakes than let's say wait for and think for two to three minutes every time before saying something. Because just like what I said, it's a live interaction. So if you have to think so long and think so much before any sentences or words that you spelled out, then this conversation is just not likely to flow well. And also unless you are paying for someone to talk to you, that person would also be unlikely to be willing to wait for you each time to figure out a perfect sentence to say. Okay, now let me share with you the things I do all the time when practicing speaking English and also all the other foreign languages with someone. So first of all, I always adopt this fake it till you make it kind of attitude. The thing is, you don't need to be good in speaking English for someone to feel or to think that, ah, oh, she already speak good English. So just relaxed. 
be at ease, be confident, and adopt this vibe of I totally speak English. It is totally fine that in the beginning you feel really nervous and you don't want to say much. It's okay to listen to other people talking most of the time and just throw in your opinion here and there. And when you make mistakes, own your mistakes. Learn to be okay with it. Trust me, the more mistakes you make, the more and more you will become comfortable when you make mistakes. You might wonder why fake it till you make it mindset, this kind of attitude is important. Because if you are extremely nervous, always afraid of opening your mouth and worrying about making mistakes, this sort of emotion would also transmit to the person that you are talking to. And that person will like Likely also started to feel kind of awkward, kind of nervous, and this kind of atmosphere vibe is just not gonna help this conversation to flow in a good way. Secondly, try not to translate everything you want to say from your native tongue to English. I'm so guilty of doing it myself when I practice speaking Arabic and Spanish, but really like every language has its own way of functioning, so it's just not going to make sense to translate them all the time. And since you already understand English, then it's much better to start training your brain to think in English instead of translating translating them all the time. Well, the lighting is better here, so that's why. Anyway, thirdly, try your best to not switch to other languages during your English conversation with someone. No matter how hard it is going to be for you or how easy it will be for you to just switch to another language. I'm also very guilty of doing it myself from time to time, but I find it detrimental because when you struggle to say certain words or phrases, it's actually a great opportunity to train your brain to come up with another way of saying it and this ability is such a useful skill to develop because it is nearly impossible to always have the exact words or phrases fourthly try to mimic how native speakers speak i don't know if you have ever noticed that in each language it has its own way of expressing things and emotions okay let's say for example when you are shocked, you are surprised, and just couldn't believe in something. In Chinese, in Mandarin, we say, 真的假的? 太夸张了吧? And in English, we say, What? Are you kidding me? That's, that's impossible. And in Japanese, we say, eh, マジで? And in French, we say, Mais non, mais c'est pas possible. Well, something like that. Maybe it's not like the best example, but I hope you get what I mean. It's actually a very, very fun thing to do, a fun practice to practice. And it also makes you feel like a local, which is, I, I love this kind of practice. Lastly, very important, try to smile as much as possible when you talk to others and just try to be in a good mood in general and also try to engage yourself in the conversation as much as possible. So why is this important? Because when you are in a happy mood, it also affects the person whom you are talking to and the whole vibe, the whole atmosphere would therefore be good. It will Will make you less nervous and anxious and on top of that when you engage yourself in the conversation you stop worrying about making mistakes because you are so engaged in the conversation you are curious you want to share your thoughts and opinions so badly naturally just like you don't care you stop caring about making mistakes so after your conversation with someone, there's only one thing that I would suggest you to do. Try to recall, are there any words or phrases that you want to say so badly during the conversation, but you just have no idea how to say them and just, you know, in your brain, you couldn't find the words. If you do, then look them up and note them down. Based on my personal experiences, like words and phrases, I learned from this kind of situation always 
perfectly stick in my head for a very long time. I think the reason is that the frustrations I felt during the conversation of, you know, like, damn, I want to say this so badly, but I just don't know how to say it. It's so strong and it sucks. So because of this kind of frustrations, after I looked them up, it's just sticked in my head for such a long time that I usually won't forget about them. It's not just like a random phrase or word throw to you from a textbook or a teacher that you really just don't know when to use them or how exactly to use them. So yes, recall, look them up, and note them down. So that's about it for today's video. I hope you like it. And before I say bye bye to you guys, I want to address one question that many of you might have, which is I just don't have anyone, literally like anyone to talk to in English. And I also don't live in an English speaking environment. So what do I do? It's okay. It's it's totally fine. Let me tell you, it's totally fine. Just try to spend more time on practicing the drills I mentioned in the before section. And when the chances actually come, whether it is a language exchange partner, English speaking friend, random stranger who speaks English, or your classmate, your colleague, etc. Etc. Et you will be ready to speak English with them. Isn't that amazing? So anyway, thanks so much again for watching today's video. I hope you will find it helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye, bye, bye.